I am here to talk about the Lance Camper and how we love living with Lance in the beginning. Okay, the story with Lance Camper is I bought a Lance Camper. I did a lot of research on it and I wanted to get one that I thought would be the best Lance Camper, the best camper for our situation. We ski in the wintertime and we ski for about four or five months out of the year. Okay, so we will take the, the camper and go to different ski areas. And when we bought this in Salt Lake from Paris RV, they, um, we told them what we were going to do. And we liked the idea that Lance was a Four Seasons uh, RV. So we thought, well, that'll be perfect for when we go up to the high country because our specific use for it was going to be for skiing. We had it for about two months, um, staying in and out of it up in, um, up in California. And I started to notice a huge amount of condensation in the, in the uh, RV the trail, travel trailer, it was a travel trailer. And when I, and the, the idea that we were getting so much con, con, you know, condensation was baffling me because we hadn't even hooked up any of the water system yet because we took showers at the RV resort that we were at. So everything, so there shouldn't have been that much condensation in the, our, the travel trailer. And once I wiped by our head, we, I was noticing a lot of moisture. I picked up the mattress and the mattress is already getting moldy. And this was after two months. So I got a hold of Paris RV. They put me through to some regional, regional sales rep or service rep who then put me in touch with Lance. And when I got in touch with the Lance service rep, um, they had given me some ideas of what to do. Well, you need to open the windows and let the condensation out or run the fan. And I'm like, okay, so you know, if I run the fan and I open the windows, we are below 20 degrees here. And when I, and this is supposedly certified to go skiing with, well, that's the way you're going to get rid of it. So on a nice day, I opened the whole thing up, open doors, open windows, left everything open. And we still couldn't get rid of hundred percent of the con condensation. I sent some pictures into you guys on all the, the different mold. If you put a, if you put a sheet down, not a sheet, excuse me. If you put down a rug underneath of it, would get mold in our closet where we hung our clothes, anything that was touching against the closet would get mold. Uh, if you, your jacket was touching the wall anytime during the night, it would stick to the wall frozen and then you'd have to get it off. The locks were frozen. The storage units were frozen shut because the condensation would get in there. You couldn't unlock the storage unit. I mentioned this to Lance over and over again, and they their response was, condensation is to be expected. That has nothing to do with the warranty. We're not representing it. They're not taking care of it. And uh, to me, I bought it from Lance. We paid a lot of money. It's probably one of the most expensive trailers out there assuming that it was going to be able to handle the winter. That was the whole reason we bought it and it failed every way. The mold, the mold and the moisture is something. Finally, uh, the picture that I sent into you guys with the mold that was from our kitchen table. Uh, once I saw that uh, we just put it in storage. We just didn't use it anymore because I, I don't know. Um, what that mold can do to me and my lungs. And that could be not a good thing. I, I'm just disappointed because I contacted both uh, Lance. I've contacted their parent company, which is RevCorp. RevCorp hasn't responded back to me. RevCorp sent it back to Lance. The same gentleman that I talked to at Lance um, contacted me again. I told them, guys, if you don't take this back, I'm going to go public and warn everybody about it. And they are, we're still to the point of, it's not an issue. Please look at the owner's guide. You stayed in it longer than we tell people to stay in it. And I'm like, well, you know, when I bought it from Paris RV, Paris RV knew exactly what I was going to do with this. And if they thought there was going to be any issue, they should have told me at that particular time. I talked to Paris RV, Paris RV, said, Joanne, we'd really like to help you. Lance doesn't take them back. Have you gotten this looked at by a um, tra travel trailer place, a Lance representative? Because I bought it in um, Utah and we live in Reno. And I said, no, I hadn't gotten it looked at by a 
dealer, but it's sitting in Utah. If you'd like, I'd have it dropped off and you can take a look at it. And he goes, no, no, I don't want to store that. And that was his comment. He was all happy to help until I said, no, it's still sitting in there in Salt Lake because that's where we left it because we were skiing there. Um, and he said, I'd like to help you. But um, then he said he would go. He said, well, I don't believe there's an issue, but if you want, you can you can bring it in. And that's what he finally the last email I got from is I don't believe there's an issue or the last conversation, but you can bring it in and check it out. And I thought, well, you just said in the same sentence that you told me to bring it in and you check it out that you don't think there's an issue. So it's like, why would I take it to you? Because you're just going to turn around and say there's not an issue. And I said, hey, I'm happy to give it to you guys. Someone take it up into the mountains. I'll take responsibility for it and see the condensation that builds up. I would have expected that they would have thought, wow, condensation in the middle of winter. We should probably send a engineer out there to find out what we can do to get some sort of um, moisture evaporation. He told me to, I went and got a dehumidifier shipped in because that was another suggestion. Go ahead and get a dehumidifier. And I said, well, dehumidifier is going to take up a lot of the RV, but I'll give that a try. The dehumidifier didn't work as well. So it was, it would have had the baby running all the time. It's just a lot of moisture. The wood in it is being affected by it. The um, cushions are affected by it. It's just what I believe is a engineering design flaw. We've contacted the consumer report in Utah. We have contacted you and we've contacted some better business bureaus because there's three companies involved. We have Paris RV who wasn't taking responsibility. We have Lance Corporation that isn't taking responsibility. And then the parent company, which builds a lot of different uh, RVs, emergency vehicles, Rev Group, and we've contacted them and they have not responded back. I'm going to continue going to the Better Business Bureau of Milwaukee because that's where Rev Group is stationed. And then uh, Lancaster, California is where Lance is stationed and then Utah is it. So I'll be sending it to each three of those states. Because as you know now, um, it's not good to have something that you don't have good breathing in. In Rev Group, you can't really contact them as an individual. You have to go and fill out a form on their their website. And I did that. And Rev Group did talk to the service manager at Lance Corporation because he did get back to me after I sent a note into Rev Group. And he ended up telling me that um, I think I've talked to you before. And I'm like, yes, we've talked many times before. And his then he was the one again that said, when I first talked to him, he said, I'm going to take this up higher up to the managers and see if we can take it back. Um, and then he said, well, none of them are on vacation. So I be, should be able to reach out to them. When he got back to me, he said, well, there's, um, I did contact them and we're not going to take it back. And I said, okay, well, who was that you contacted? Because I want to send them more pictures because this is, it was so bad. I mean, I, I sent the pictures into you guys and he gave me that person's number, which is supposedly higher up Matt in the Lance Corporation. And um, I have not heard back from him in any way. I've sent, I've copied him on the emails, the last emails that I sent in. And Karen, who um, she was a, Karen was from Paris RV. Jessica, they were the accountants there. I talked to the salesperson, Taz, at Paris RV. And then I got a call back, which I'm assuming was the owner of Paris, because once I sent in the packet with all the pictures, another gentleman called me and he's the one that said, you know, I really want to help you. But he wants, he said, we're not responsible. Lance is responsible. And then at Lance Corporation, I talked to first their info at Lance, which got me through to Diana, which then passed it up to Mike, who was her boss. But I had already talked to Mike because Scott, the regular uh, representative for the region of Utah put me on to Mike Williams, who is at Lance. So I've talked to all of those people there at the Better Business, at, not at the Better Business Review, but at Lance Corporation. And I know it was copied to other people because I have the emails and there was other gentlemen or people copied on those um E on those emails. So it has been sent up to, I believe, pretty high up 
in the corporation at both Paris and Lance. Now, as far as Rev Group goes, I don't know where who it got to, but the Rev Group did get back to Mike Williams, who then recalled me after he had told me that he wasn't going to do it. Um, I would say not to pick up this one. Um, this is not our first travel trailer. It's our fourth. So we're pretty experienced with them. I did a lot of the research. The best thing I can say is do, do research and then do more research. Um, I didn't go out and look for people that may have had other problems. I just went out and did research from different RV sites. I didn't go out and look at, say, your, you know, uh, pissedconsumer.com. I didn't go there. I just went and did the research from RV dealership to RV dealership, where reality is you, you need to check the pros and the cons before you buy. That is the one, if anything, you have to do that because each each person buying it may have a different situation. Somebody who may say you're wrong, they might only use it one week out of the year. They may only use it two weeks out of the year. So nothing's going to happen to them. But then they may not use it at 9,500 feet in the middle of a snowstorm when it gets down to 10 degrees or zero degrees. So that's that's something you have to decide what you're using it for. And that's, hence again, why we bought it, because we thought it was four season. We thought it was going to be the best, the conditions that we were going to use it in. Um, I think it will, it's definitely changed. People are panicking now, of course. Um, I think what's going to change overall in the long term, I don't know if it's consumer or not, but many people are working from home right now. I think it's going <laughs> to be a rev revolution, revelation for people to think that, well, I can work at home, be more productive in my work. And how much is that going to save now? And I, I think we're going to see a whole shift on people working from home more, um, even when the coronavirus does subside. Uh, the good news is it's subsiding in China already. It's, ha it's happening that way. I think people will end up being overall nicer to people. To give you an idea, there was, I went into the grocery store, finally had toilet paper in there. And I called my girlfriend who has two kids. And I said, hey, I, there's toilet paper. Here. Do you need any? And she said, no, I don't need anything. And I'm like, okay. I said, well, I'm good too. And so I handed it back to the guy and I said, you know, we don't really need this. I said, I'm just going to leave it on the shelf. Somebody else will probably need it. And he just looked at me with a really funny face. And he goes, there was a woman who just came in here. It was in tears because she finally found some. And I'm like, well, good. Then maybe somebody else will buy this and not be so much greedy, but be, be giving to people. I, I think hopefully my imagination is, or my image is everybody being a little bit nicer and kinder to people. And that we'll probably see a cost effectiveness of people working at home more because we have the computers and we have that ability and the production of what they can do is probably going to be better.